Hello students, Professor Benavides here. I want to talk to you about the NetBeans debugger. The debugger helps us find problems in our code and helps us to fix them. And it does this in a very visual kind of way. Now the NetBean, NetBeans debugger has many features. We're just going to go ahead and use some of the basic features. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and set up a couple of breakpoints and then walk through the program line by line. So breakpoints are just places in your code where the program will stop so that you can go line by line and open up the variables tab so you can see the variables being populating as you um, execute line by line of your code. To uh, set the breakpoints, you can use the menu, which is debug toggle line, or you could just simply click on the line number. So as you can see here, we're going to use the money changer from, I believe it's from chapter two. And we're going to set a breakpoint uh, at these two different places. And that'll give us an opportunity to walk through the variables and, and, um, and, and see the values pop in. You could pretend that maybe there's something wrong with this program. Typical thing that students will go wrong on this is they'll do something like this. They'll duplicate the uh, variable names. And they'll get mixed up with the um, uh, mathematical operators here. They uh, will use division in the wrong place, modulus in the wrong place, or maybe use uh, uh, have typographical errors. So instead of 100, they're using 10. So that's why they end up with different numbers. Now, you know, when, you, you, when you run the program, uh, you, you're going to put in the test data, and you're going to want to match up uh, with the output from your book. So if your output from the book doesn't match up, you want to probably use the debugger to help you go through this line by line. You still need to understand the program and how it works, but many times I find that this actually helps you understand your program even better if you had a small uh, kind of doubt about that. Also, really the debugger, it can be used not just to find problems and fix them, that's debugging, you can run the debugger uh, on, on control structures and methods and classes, programs that have these uh, uh, coding structures. And uh, as you walk through it, uh, through your program, you're probably going to understand how that program uh, works a lot better. So we're going to set up these two little breakpoints, and then we're going to go ahead and click on Debug Project, this button right here. And that will give us an opportunity to look at the Variables tab now, the variables tab is in the bottom of your uh, NetBeans uh, interface. And if it's collapsed, you may, have to, you may have to go to the lower left and click on output or variables to uh, see it. Now, once you go into debugging mode, you get all these extra little buttons. And they're almost self-explanatory. Uh, the, the red one is stop and pause and play. And then we're going to use the step over, uh, you know, which allows us to go ahead and go through line by line and understand what's going on. So what the red line is, the red line is a breakpoint. What's the green line? The green line is every time you, you, you go through line by line by line, that is what, what, what you see. So the green line is the line that's going to get executed but hasn't gotten executed yet. So as we're going through this, we're seeing the variables being populated. See, like for example, right here, I've got 549 going into kind of hard to see all the way over here into cents. And I think we just did our, our first uh, line here, which is dividing cents by 100. And that gives us dollars. Uh, you know, so I can see here that dollars is uh, the value of the dollars, which is an int, has five in it. So we click on the step over button again and go through to the next line. So understanding the logic of this program is that we divide by 100, and then we use the modulus on the next increment to find out the next um, uh, value. So we're going to go dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. And that's done with this logic of dividing by 100, and then modulus 100, divided by 25, modulus 25, divided by 10, modulus 10, you know continuing on there. And then we're going to keep an eye on this variables tab as we walk through it, uh, the logic of the program, to see the variables popu uh, populate. So a lot of times what you'll see here is the students will say, oh, look, I was supposed to put in 
a 10 and I put in a one, or look, I duplicated dimes two times. So you gotta, you know, as you're going through this, you know, um, you wanna look for the variable names and you wanna look at the value for each of these variable names. And um, that'll give you an idea of, of a possible place where you have your problem, okay? So she walked you through this, clicking on the uh, step over button. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that, it's F8. So that's what I'm gonna show you in just a minute when I bring up this program and we walk through it. Because that's really all she does here. She sets the two breakpoints and then she walks through it with the F8 uh, and watching the variables tab of the variables pop in and the in the variables tab. And that's pretty much uh, the use of this particular uh, feature. Now you can click on the red button to stop or you could just go all the way through. When you go all the way through, you're finished uh, debugging. You're pretty much, the way you, the way you know you're finished debugging is that those those nice little buttons, these colorful buttons are gone and you're back to the to the green uh, um, um, play button uh, of before. So let's go ahead and, and uh, run um, our program here. So here's our money changer program. This is the same one from chapter seven. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint right here. Let me go ahead and set it the way she does it first. She goes to debug and then toggle line breakpoint. Uh, and then she does another one over here. I just click right there on the line number, see? So now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and uh, click on debug project. You could have used a keyboard shortcut for that too. And here are those special buttons that I'm telling you, see how they appear? The, the button that she, we're gonna be stepping uh, stepping on or clicking on is the step over button. See how it's got a keyboard shortcut, it's F8. So I'm just gonna press F8. Notice how I did stop on the first uh, breakpoint. That's the whole idea. It goes through all of these lines and it stops right there. I could have put it at different places, but this gives us an opportunity to watch the variables as they pop in. So as I go, as I press F8, what I'm doing right now is I'm pressing F8 and I, I need to, the, normally people have the variables tab open. I don't, I collapse mine, okay? So let me show you in the variables uh, tab. Uh, I went to the lower left and clicked on variables. I've got 549 in a sense. And as I'm going through this, you're gonna go ahead and, and see, I'm gonna to continue to press F8 on here. And let me look at the variables uh, thing again, variables tab. You'll see how the values for these variables have been populated. Uh, the neat thing about this is you see the variable name, you see the data type of the variable name, it looks like they're all ints and you see the value that is inside of that, okay? So uh, I'm gonna, I'm coming back to the program here, it's gonna continue to press F8, and it comes to the end of the program, okay? Now the output, you didn't see it because I have it collapsed, and there's, here's the output. I like to see as much code as possible, guys. So when I need to see the output or something, I'll just click on it down there below. So as you can see here, um, this is the output that should match your book. You've got $5, one quarter, two dimes, zero nickels, and four pennies. Many times people turn this in, and when they turn it in, they've got all kinds of stuff on here. And that's usually because they did something like, it could be a typo typographical mistake of the numbers, it could be misuse of the mathematical operators, it could be uh, duplicating of the variable names, and what this helps us to do is it helps us to walk through it. Now notice how I walked through the whole thing and I know that I got out of debug mode because I got the big green button again. I wanted to show you the same thing again with the money changer program, uh, given a, using a, a graphical interface. I set the same two breakpoints. Well, here's one that's um, same two breakpoints. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this and let's just see what the big difference in doing debugging between um, the, a console app uh, versus a, a, a GUI app, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the debug project, just as before, and I'm gonna put in the same uh, amount of, of cents, 549, I believe. And then I'm gonna just press F8 as I go through this, okay? And as I'm pressing F8, the variables are being populated. Now, the other thing that you could do really is instead of looking at the variable window, uh, you could just uh, point 
when you point to the variable, you'll see what's inside of it. Okay. So that's just another way. A lot of times what I tell people to do is just go into debug mode and, and just walk through it step by step. In fact, you don't even need to set breakpoints. Uh, you can do step into with F7 and just go line by line by line, you know, and point to the variable name and you'll see what's inside of it. Okay, like for example, if I point to pennies, pennies doesn't have anything in it yet, you know, because I haven't gotten there yet, right? Okay, so, you know, cents have got four, right? Nichols has got zero. Pennies has got nothing because remember the green line, good test question, the green line is the line that's gonna get executed but hasn't executed yet. And the pink lines or the red lines or whatever you wanna call them, those are the breakpoints. Those are the place, that's the place where your program stops when you run it so that you can examine the code in the variables tab, okay? That I showed you, instead of looking at the variables tab, you could just simply point to the variable and you'll notice you get almost the same thing. You, you get like, you, you can see there that it's an int and that it's got four in it. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to, uh, to press F4, excuse me, F4, uh, F8, and here's my output. A lot of times, unfortunately, when you're doing these GUI things, it didn't happen this time, but when you get these dialogues, I have noticed that um, the input dialog or the output dialog is in the back of the NetBeans project program. So you're there like waiting for your program and you don't know what, what's going on. So you got, and you know that it's running because you see the running on the lower right-hand side of your screen. So you've got to watch out for that. It didn't happen this time, but I know it's happened to me before. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that's pretty much the end of, of this little topic on debugging. So this is a great, a great way to visually walk through the logic of your program line by line. And this particular program doesn't have any loops or ifs or functions or classes. If you use this same procedure on those programs, not necessarily for debugging, but just to understand how your program works, you really, really, um, you know, I think get some vision and understanding about how your program works. Other than that, that's all I, uh, we want to say about, uh, you know, debugging. Uh, we just set up a couple of breakpoints and we walk through it. We started the debugger and we just press the F8 and we walk through it line by line, looking at the very uh, how the variables were being populated um, in the program. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much.